bridegroom everything. I'm gonna have to drive back. Here's the bag, but no bride grid. I'm sure we'll just have to go back a little. Good morning, day nine, I think it is. And today we head to Piper Pan. Looking forward to heading down there. Um, Last night, no sounds at all. Not even a, a jackal or anything like that. Decep deception is deceptively quiet. So I saw on the board, the sightings board, that um, l last week a uh, lion had been seen three times at Piper Pan. So we hoping to find some lion. Good morning. You'll see I make two cups of coffee every morning. I um, make one coffee in the flask, the um, Stanley flask, and then the other in the mug and pour some of that into the flask as well so that they are both decent strength coffee. Right, let's get going. It's only my second morning in the CKGR and already I'm getting that Kalahari vibe. As I head out of camp to Deception Valley, I start to get a sense of what the atmosphere must have been like for Mark and Delia Owens living in Deception Valley. For those who don't know, Mark and Delia Owens were a couple that came out in the 1970s and were the first to study the animals in the central Kalahari. The book, Cry of the Kalahari, is a fantastic read for anyone wanting to visit the central Kalahari. Just as I was enjoying my coffee, I came across the same two bat-eared foxes I'd seen the night before. The rest of my early morning in Deception Valley was spent looking for as much animal life as I could possibly find and soaking up the environment before having to head south to Piper Pan.
sometimes it's nice to bump into people that are doing game viewing because you get some tips and that sort of thing. But then other times they give you the tips and you feel like, oh damn, I could have seen that. So as we came out of camp this morning, apparently there was a female lion with cubs uh, on the road back to Motswere, now Motswere Gate. Now obviously I'm not going back that route, so I didn't follow that route. Um, but on the other side of the pan, they were there. And then they disappeared into the bush. But I'm sure we'll get our lions. I'm sure we'll get our lions at some point. Maybe tonight. We have two jackal right next to the road where I need to go. Something's piqued their curiosity. So that is the road I need to take around that tree. Beautiful little guys, aren't you? Yeah? Interesting I find you guys in pairs all the time. Moving between camps also means you need to pick up the pace sometimes because you have to get to camp in the light. Today I've got to cover 100 kilometers but the GPS says it's going to take me five hours of pure driving. So I'm having to balance the desire of game viewing with the need to get to camp before sunset in the hopes that I can get just a little bit of time at the watering hole. One thing I will say that um, traveling solo on your own, game viewing is challenging in a place like CKGR. Every road is like rutted and bumped and you go through and you're bouncing around. So you're trying to hold on to the steering, keep the car straight and then all the time looking around. So when you do get a little patch of flat land like I've got here, you kind of uh, savor it. Traveling south, it uh, dawned on me that um, doing CKG on the winter north to south is probably a better thing because you basically have the sun at your back so when you're trying to game view you've got that sort of um, vantage point as opposed to trying to blind yourself into the sun and uh, see shadows and things like that interesting I've been driving along wondering about this. There's so many ditches and dongas that one goes through on this road. And um, should the park be repairing the roads to make it easier, or should we leave them uh, unrepaired and part of the adventure? Now, if we leave them unrepaired and part of the adventure, it means that in the wet season, guys are coming along and they're getting stuck or plowing their way through um, grassland on either side of the road so that they can get where they need to be. So the whole road width starts getting wider and wider and more gets eroded and more gets eroded um, in certain places then. Uh, and in certain places it's just like not even an issue, you can't even do it. So the question is, if they fill them in and made them better, surely that would be better for the environment. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. All I can say is I don't want to be the guy that created that ditch on the left there. Wow, wheel sliding and banging against the wall as you drive. Whoa. This is hectic ruts here. Plus, I wouldn't want to fall into this rut. It must be treacherous when it's wet. So I just had a bit of a panic attack. Jumped out and checked if I was leaking diesel. 
because both fuel gauges are on quarter unit fast. So I just heard this thunk and I think we've lost some of our firewood. Yep, the whole bag just fell right off the roof. That's gonna have to go in the car. So all of the wood is off the roof now and in the back of the troopy. I can't strap it down anymore because the uh, bags are completely trashed from bouncing around. So, check your wood and things on your roof when you stop. I should have checked it earlier. So thank goodness I noticed that fall off the roof because there is nowhere to get uh, wood. I would have to chop a tree down, which isn't, strictly speaking, the correct thing to do. Sorry, just getting going again. And uh, yeah, I've only got four bags for eight days uh, left, so I've got it. No, five bags, sorry, five bags for eight days. So I've got to just conserve what fire would I use. Try a little random information. My eight cup man boobs, or whatever the size they are, are taking a pounding on them. I see it up and down the road. A little bit of information you probably didn't need to know, but it's quite interesting to know that I actually have a chest. And women know this every day, but men don't. This road is exhausting. It's just unrelenting bumps up and down. And I guess that's the nature of CKGR roads. Um, I was hoping for a spot with a pan that I could stop at, but I uh, can't, so uh, just stopped in the middle of the road. I'm gonna make myself some lunch, grab a cook. I'm glad I made all this tuna. It's proving to be handy having it in the fridge for stops. There we go. Two wraps, ready to go. Woolies couldn't have done better. So finally we hit a turn off. We're not going to powder anymore, we are going to pipe a pan loop. Bloody exhausted. I'm exhausted from that drive. My hands are red from tying up, from hanging on to the steering. Sure does look like cheetah country. As I head around Piper Pan Loop, I discover loads of antelope and animals, and it's pretty evident that this pan and the waterhole support quite a large population of animals. When I arrived at the water hole, the kudu were all in the water, drinking. It seems as if the animals all take it in turns to drink in their various species, with the birds dive bombing in and out to get their fair share.
and the scene at the waterhole wouldn't be complete with what appeared to be some sort of mating ritual going on with the vultures. fit to put the remains of animals in the trees. These trees are rather dead, but they are blossoming actually. They will be green soon. Just got to show you, this is how dense the bush is around the ablutions. Anything could sneak out. Hopefully, we don't need the ablutions. I have something quite serious. I've lost my entire bag, bridegroom, everything. I'm going to have to drive back. I don't know how far. But I'm gonna have to drive back. It's gone. So I was planning a game drive. That's not gonna happen. Uh, fortunately, it's only one o'clock. So I'm gonna just backtrack as far as I can to see what I can find of my bag, which has been completely destroyed. So I'm racing back. As you can see, um, I'm well aware of a couple of things going through my mind and which are really important. My fuel is very, you know, I've got to watch my fuel. That's why I said it's possibly no game drive tonight. Uh, I think I'm doing okay on my fuel, um, but we've still got to get through the whole of CKGR. The other side of the coin is that bag had everything that related to brying. So it had some firewood, it had fire lighters, it had bright brickets, it had my bright grid, and it had my fire poker. Ah! Here it is, in the road. Okay, here's the bag. But no bright grid. I'm sure we'll just have to go back a little to find that. So now to see if we can find a bright grid and fire poker. I think I found it already. Ah. Here it is. <sighs> so, not too bad. Twelve kilometers out. From uh, Piper Pen, I found it. Now to make a U-turn in the soft sand. Hope we don't get stuck. Bash it! Bash it! Push it! Pump it! Go! Yeah, baby, found it. Now we'll the trick is to find out what we're gonna do with it. My wheel cover bag is now destroyed by CKGR. And time to sort out the complete mess that is in here I have to work out what to do with everything right so we have that firewood and fire lighters and 
that secured on the roof. And then the charcoal we put in the black bag. The bright grid we put in black bag over there. And the five poker I've stuck down that early. So all in all sorted. So my day to Piper Pan and CKGR keep on giving. Okay, so one, the, roof, the wood fell off the roof. I had to collect the root wood. Two, we lost the, um, the bag, had to go back and look for that. Three, I was packing some extra beers in the fridge and discovered that two cans of Coke had exploded in the fridge. So I had to clean that out. Four, I've no sooner done all that chopped my wood, got myself ready for camp and discover that I'm on Piper 1, not Piper 2 and uh, some other guests have arrived and would like their sight. They weren't nasty like Kubu people but now I'm going at 2.40 to go and find my sight. Oh, what a day. So the terrain around Piper 2 is very much different in the thick bush where you can't necessarily see anything coming. So this is Piper 2. Piper 2, here we are. So this sort of thing is annoying. People disposing their toilet paper in the bushes. Oh my gosh. This is a full on paper fest. But I'll try and clean up but your just reams and reams of it. You gotta get it out of the bloody thorn tree now. Oh, great. Please, people, try and keep the campsites clean. I know it's scary at night, but at least bring it to the toilet in the morning. That is the Coca-Cola stained tea towel I had to dry the inside of the fridge out with. So I was sitting at the water hole, uh, which seemed to have gone down quite a bit. And the next thing, uh, these guys arrived to work on the water hole. I don't know if you can zoom in, no you can't. They're over there. They're about to fix it. Apparently uh, elephant were here last week and may have stood on one of the pipes and uh, damaged it. So there's just a trickle of water coming out, not clearly. So interesting thing, this dude that is fixing the pipes, he does it on a volunteer basis for the CKGR. Um, he's actually got a, a, a drilling company. He drills boreholes and he drills for underground for, uh, for gold. Um, and he's got a trucking company and a whole bunch of other things. So as part of his give back, he actually services all the water holes and fixes them in and around uh, the CKGR. So got a lot of good intel from him. Um, his name's Chris. Chris is the borehole that Kaide has fixed nicely and there are loads of elephants there. So I should definitely stop in. They'll definitely be there in the middle of the day. Um, and then he says Kaka should have elephant and lion because um, their water hole is also working beautifully and apparently they've also fixed the showers at Kade so I'm going to try and sneak in a shower at Kade camp so there's Chris deep in it Rock you 
put on here. Ready? Have you got? Yeah. <laughs> Chris hasn't found the pipe yet, and so they're going to dig a big hole over here to find the pipe that goes up to the solar plant that's near my camp. Aww. So it's quite a catch-22. Yeah, it's a big you got to you got to concrete it in to prevent the elephants and things damaging no, it. But then when it's damaged, it's like no, a nightmare. It's only like this, you see. Oh right. But an elephant's heavy, right? Huh. Yeah. Push down, they push that pipe and the concrete down with it. Sure. So while uh, that is a little bit of a disappointment that you don't get to see much at the water hole because it's broken, it's still quite an interesting story listening to Chris and Trevor. And um, they're now going to break out the ground and put in a temporary um, water source because they do plan a new. Uh, water hole, so they're going to put a giant concrete plinth in on top of the existing pipe, and um, hopefully that'll work. So I don't know if they're going to get done tonight because it is already quarter past five. So I said to them, I'm going to go and start my fire, and I offered for them to join me on my campsite. They were just going to camp out there on the open plains. I said, come on man, there's a toilet at my place, there's a shower at my place. Chris is in that mud, they're all going to be filthy and need a shower. So if they've got the water, they're welcome to join, more the merrier. So let's see what happens. Back in camp, it's time to set up the troopy for the night and get the fire going before having a shower. So we are going to give one of the Charles at Piper Pan to a turn. And we hope no lions turn up in the middle of it. I want to be running down the road, Kalhat, in the Kalahari. <laughs> Doesn't look like it's been used for a while. So, just finished showering. But as you can see, I've got my phone on selfie mode and I can check if something's coming while I'm showering, assuming you sober. sunset. Cheers. A little bit of sun there. So Chris has come to share the camp with me, Chris and Trevor and the boys. But they came back and told me that the, lion, uh, the elephant are at the watering hole. So my camp is all set up. So he gave me his uh, Defender to go drive down to the watering hole. That's going to be pretty cool. So 
don't know what Chris and his team did, but these two elephants arrived very shortly afterwards. The light quality is very low, so forgive the quality of the image because the sun has set a little while ago, as you can see. Back at camp it was time to finish off dinner with the boys around the fire. They flew out from Mound this morning all the way to here and these are the burgers they have. Mm. You must you must live with them some in the tent. I spent an awesome evening around the fire with Chris and his team. They regaled me with their war stories like the time they had to recover a dead hippo out of a water hole before they could repair it. We retired to our tents and it wasn't long before the lions started to roar. There's a lion print. There's my foot. It's supposed to be seven hour drive today. This guy's coming to investigate me. That sand is very deep. It's been destroyed by the elephant. The interesting thing is there is no road here. I think uh, we're going to be pushing it getting to Barpet. 